Hello everybody, Don't Blink here again with another Battlefield 3 gameplay commentary for you guys. And today I've got a round of Conquest Large on the Shar Canals to share with you all. And this footage was recorded right after Battlefield 3 came out, I think within a week of its release. And I've had it on my hard drive ever since. So uh, this video has been long in the making. But the reason why I'm showing you this footage now is because I wanted to talk about the honeymoon stage in video games. Uh, I know that Battlefield 3 has changed dramatically since I recorded this footage in terms of patches and game balance and stuff like that. But that's actually kind of what I want to talk about today. The honeymoon stage, in my opinion, is that period right after a game comes out where the game is just super enjoyable. And I think it comes down to a few things why that is. Number one, is the game is new. It's something new, you've never experienced it before, and for that reason it's entertaining and it's fun and enjoyable. And everything is just a new experience or a new variation on an experience you just had. And uh, for that reason, a game that's new is always fun, no matter what type of game it is, no matter whether it's a multiplayer game or single player game or co-op game, what have you. But the multiplayer stage or period or effect that I'm talking about today uh, in particular affects multiplayer games like Battlefield 3 and like Call of Duty and other shooters that use the persistent unlock tree or system that has become so uh, mainstream and widespread in video games these days. And the reason why I think it's uh, particular to these types of games is because when a game first comes out and players are just starting to play it and they haven't put too many hours into it, they haven't unlocked all of these goodies and gadgets and gear and weapons and unlocks and vehicles and kill streaks and everything else that's included in first person shooters and, and similar games these days. And because they don't have access to those things, they, they have to use what's given to them, and I, I'm pretty sure developers, kind of as a rule, they always try and balance their games most extensively on the very basic weapons that players have when a, a game first comes out. I know that Demise 99, kind of the weapon balancer for Battlefield 3, based the entire game's weapon balance on the M16A3, the starting weapon for the US side in Battlefield 3. So that should give you an idea of kind of where developers focus their attentions in terms of, uh, you know, Q&A and uh, game testing and game balancing and things like that. So when a game first comes out, it's at its most balanced because people have access to very limited gear and they have access to the gear that the developers have tested most thoroughly. And for those reasons, you don't see these major issues with a, a new multiplayer game. Number one, because players haven't played that much and they haven't found the issues yet. And number two, they haven't even unlocked the things that cause the, the common issues that plague first person shooters nowadays. And those common issues are, are basically three, in my opinion. Number one is weapon balance, or just game balance in general. People finding weapons or weapon combinations that are just way too powerful. Number two, bugs and glitches. Those are pretty common and frequent in uh, huge games that, that come out these days. But number three, there's also exploits. Exploits like the MAV writing glitch, and exploits like the M26 mass glitch that is currently plaguing Battlefield 3. And I honestly believe if first person shooters and, and similar games didn't follow this persistent unlock system that has become so popular these days, that a lot of these issues wouldn't exist. Because developers would have more time and more manpower to devote to, you know, individual weapons and attachments and things. Because if there are fewer attachments and weapons and things, obviously it's easier to test those uh, 
those features and, and such. But also, uh, they would be able to test for exploits and, and bugs and glitches and everything else. And what I want to ask you guys is, do you like the persistent unlock system that uh, is in so many games nowadays enough to overlook the issues that it causes? These weapon imbalances, these exploits, these glitches. Or would you rather return to the days of very limited unlockables? Unlockables that are purely cosmetic, or unlockables that are, uh, you know, just much more limited than what we're seeing in a lot of shooters these days. I mean, Battlefield 3 has so many weapons and attachments and perks, and uh, just, just everything in this game is so customizable, and it's one of the things that DICE and EA used to market this game so effectively, but it's also one of the things that has caused a lot of problems with Battlefield 3 so far in terms of balancing this game and preventing people from exploiting aspects of the game's design. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say on the matter. I myself, I'm really on the fence about this subject. I, I can't really decide either way because having all these unlockables definitely adds to the replayability of a game. But like I've said this entire video, it causes a lot of problems as well. So I don't know. I could really go either way, and I guess it come, it always comes down to the individual game and just how well the developers uh, were able to balance and test it. But uh, sometimes, you know, I want to I say, no, let's go back to the, the olden days where you're given you know, choice of 10 weapons and you have to pick from them. Or, you know, another day will go by and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm having so much fun testing all these weapons out with all these different attachments. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's really something that I struggle with as a gamer uh, in terms of trying to decide upon one opinion or the other. But uh, it's definitely something that we need to think about as gamers and as a community as a whole. Because if... Uh, the time comes when, you know, it's basically universally thought that this unlock system is, is no longer benefiting us and it is in turn uh, acting as a detriment to the games that we play and our enjoyment of those games, then we need to tell developers and publishers that it's not the direction that we want to go in anymore. So yeah, anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you all later. Have a good one. Bye.